the um, number one. So we go with um, Haley. Can you say it with the uh, using the face value? Zero and. Zero and there you go. Zero and three tenths. Okay. Number two, Ronnie. Okay, 0 0.47, which if we said that correctly, we would say 0 and 47 hundredths. There we go. And what would this one look like, Christine? 0. Point, what comes next? 0, 0.3, which if we say it, sounds like? Zero and three hundredths. There you go. I knew this one would be a little tricky. If you came up with zero point three, hopefully you noticed that that was the same as this. And this we already know is three tenths. So this can't be three hundredths as well. If it's three tenths, it can't be three hundredths. So hopefully that was a little red flag for you seeing it here as an answer that it can't be the same answer down here. Right? Go ahead, we're doing 9-3 today. Go get your book open for that. Daniel spent a day hiking through a wildlife preserve. During the first hour of the hike, he drank six-tenths liter of water. How many hundredths of a liter did he drink? Does it tell us how many hundredths? Yes. No, it doesn't but we can figure it out. So if we were to write this in um, a model that's split into tenths, how many of these would I shade? Six. <clears throat> how many of you agree with Brian? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. Last time when we did 9-2, um, I think it was Preston, or maybe even Brian, had said something what he was telling me to shade in hundredths, and he said shade two tenths. And I said, what would that look like on a hundredth? So if I have a hundred right here, what would six tenths look like? Six um, columns down, right? So one, two, three, four, five, Six. Okay, so I can still do six tenths. I do six whole columns. Now if I'm going to count those, remember now they're each tenth. In this case, they were one tenth. These are hundreds. Each one of these columns has ten in them. So if I count by tens, I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So it's really 60 hundredths. Okay, so let's look at... How we do that with the fraction itself? So pencils are down, eyes are up here. How do we do this with the fraction? We have six tenths. We are going to hundredths. What number do I multiply ten by to get to a hundred, class? Ten. ten. I multiply by ten. So if I multiply the denominator by ten, I have to multiply the numerator by? Ten. ten. So six times ten is? Sixteen. So there we go. Now, up here, we didn't do this. It says underline what we needed to find. We needed to find how many hundredths of a liter did he drink. Another way we can do it is by using a place value chart. So if we were going to write six tenths, we know that here's the decimal point. It goes here. And as I gave you a sneak peek the other day, we can put as many zeros as we want after this, and it's still the same number. So if I want to go to hundredths, there are no hundredths. I could just go ahead and put the six, I mean put the zero, and then I can see that it's sixty hundredths. So Daniel drank 0.6 or 0 0.60 liter of a water. Of a liter of water. In your own words, go ahead and explain why six tenths is equal to sixty hundredths. We just did it on this paper. 
Go ahead and explain it in words. Okay, so he's kind of going off what I said last week. No matter how many zeros you put after the number, it will be the same as long as you're talking about after the decimal. Because if I took this number, just a plain old 60, and I added some zeros, is that still the same number? No. No. So just make sure you understand that it's after the decimal. And as long as you don't add what? A number with value. So if I did, if it's 0 0.6, and then I do 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, all of a sudden that's a different number. Because that has value. These have not, no value. But that does. Okay? So we know that that, that rule kind of applies. Who explained why that rule works? Did anybody explain why that rule actually works? Haley? Okay, so she, Haley basically explained this in words. If you took the 6 tenths and you multiplied that fraction, the numerator and the denominator by 10, you would get 61 hundredths, and that works. Okay, both of those are good explanations. Jasmine collected 0 0.30 liters. How would I say 0 0.3? 3 tenths. 3 tenths, very good. Jasmine collected three tenths a liter of water in a jar during a rainstorm. How many tenths of a liter did she collect? We just said it, didn't we? Equivalent decimals are decimals that name the same amount. You can write 0 0.30 as a decimal that names just tenths. In this case, it looks like hundredths right now, doesn't it? Because it goes to the hundredths place. So we're going to show it 0 0.30. And because there's zero hundredths and nothing else after it, we can just look at this and call it three, three. three tenths. So you can write 0 0.30 as 0 0.3. It's the same thing. Okay, another way, write 0 0.30 as a fraction with a denominator of 10. So I can't just take this fraction and say 30 tenths, can I? No. Because it isn't 30 tenths, it's 30 hundreds. hundreds. Now I know how to find equivalent fractions. I know how to reduce. And in this case, if I want to make it with a denominator of 10, it's telling me I want 10 to be my denominator. How do I get from 100 to 10? Have any? Divide by 10. So if I divide the denominator by 10, I have to divide the numerator by 10. By 10. So 30 divided by 10 is? 3. three. three. So I can write it like that. Zero point three, oh, I, it didn't, I just did all the work over here and it did it down here. So 0 0.30 is 30 hundredths. 30 hundredths written as a fraction is 30 hundredths. And then we did the divide by 10. All right, so Jasmine collected 30 hundredths or 3 tenths a liter of water. They're the same thing. They're equivalent fractions. Equivalent decimals, equivalent fractions. These are the equivalent decimals. Those are equivalent decimals over here. These are equivalent fractions right here. Write four, I know, we're there already. Four tenths as an equivalent fraction. Write four tenths as hundredths. Now if we're going from tenths to hundreds, we have to multiply by? Ten. 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 If I multiply the denominator, I multiply the? Ten. Numerator by? Ten. Four times ten is? Forty. So my new fraction is? Forty. 40 tenths or 40 hundredths? 40 hundredths. 40 hundredths. Don't write just yet. We're going to do the next one. We're going to write it as a decimal. There's zero ones. Four tenths. It tells us right that the four tenths. And there's zero hundredths. So our decimal looks like that. I'm looking to change this to hundredths. That's what my directions say. 
So if I have 7 tenths and I want to go to hundredths, what do I need to multiply by? Preston? By 10. So if I multiply my denominator by 10, I have to multiply my numerator by 10, and I get what, Sophia? 70. 70. So this is the first part of the problem. It says write the number in hundreds in a fraction. Here it's, this is it as a fraction. Now I'm going to change 70 hundredths to a decimal. And I know that 70 hundredths would look like that as a decimal because this zero ends in the hundredths part when we do the place value chart. Okay, so these are my two answers. This is it as a fraction and this is it as a decimal. Now if I'm going to go from 40 hundredths, I just said that this is 70 hundredths, so this has to be 40 hundredths. Now I need to go to tenths. So I know 40 hundredths would look like that. So when I say it, I know that that's what my fraction looks like. In order to get it to tenths, I have to do what with it? By? Ten. Divide by 10. So now I have to divide this numerator by 10 and I get? Four. Four. So now this is the per first part of my answer. It's the fraction form. And now I'm going to change it to tenths. And I know tenths goes right there. That's the second part of my answer. Those are my answers.